Yeah, uh, you're good to go. Okay. All right. So, hi, everyone. Um, I am Priyanka Gagneja. Today, uh, we are discussing um, a set of functions called LMAP, Modify and Predicate Functional, in uh, the per, per package uh, book club uh, for from our Fadiyas community. Um, so, I am going to start right away. Uh, and I guess, yeah, a disclaimer, um, most of the pre-work for this discussion was, uh, you know, the presentation is prepared by Jack, and I'm just presenting, um, you know, just because of the different timings that we've had before. And um, so, yeah, we are going to focus on, uh, you know, understanding what LMAP is or how it's different from the, you know, other map functions that we have learned so far. Um, so we will be, you know, uh, this this discussion for today, I think, is going to be a lot more um, interactive in, in terms of, you know, we will try a lot of things. So maybe, you know, just discuss as how everybody sort of has gotten the sense of these functions. Uh, we might also, you know, try and sort of brainstorm and try things uh, on the fly. So let's get going. Um, so last week... Uh, so we didn't meet last week, but the week prior to that, we uh, we covered uh, map two and the pmap functions, and um, so let's let's get on with uh, lmap. So very much in sync with the concept of map. Um, in in lmap, um, it it will become logical when we, we think about what this is. So map functions generally always so map only the the base map, not the base, but you know. The basic version of the map function from per package, it always returns you a list, but it works on a vector. Now, lmap is something is a function which um, um, you apply to list elements of a list, or um, I I read it as list of lists. Um, so, for example, if you have um, you know a list that contains list in itself, um, so that's what a list of list means. And uh, so there is this example from the docs uh, where, you know, we're trying to create, um, you know, a, a way to randomly repeat something. And so if your uh, list of list is named as X and this is how it looks like, it contains letters, it contains numbers and, uh, you know, things of these, this nature. And this is how the list looks like. Now, if I were to apply, um, you know this uh, this function which is going to uh, set names for on on a you know using a Poisson distribution. This um, you could use an LMAP here when you're applying it on a list of five elements. So um, let's see. So uh, so L LMAP does not take uh, vectors. So so if you're running, if you're giving an input as so your dot x has to be a list, if you you give your give it a vector, it's going to throw an error. So um, I think a couple of things uh, to highlight for an LMAP function from the docs also is that it makes it possible. So LMAP makes it possible to work with function that exclusively take list as inputs. Um, so for example, for a map function, you know, if you, so your dot X could be a list or it could be a simple vector. Uh, but if, uh, and and I, I think more important than that, in your F, yeah, in your dot F, the function that you're uh, applying to this vector or to this list also has to take a list in this case. So then it becomes easier to operate in, in a scenario like that. Um, and it allows your function to access the attributes of the encapsulating list, meaning, you know, the the elements of list inside the list, right? So those elements. So uh, I think it's written over here. Let me open up this one. So we are talking about uh, this this element. So x of you know double bracket i is basically. Uh, this element. So let me bring this up again. So each each of these element values. So this X is a list of list, and then it contains these four lists: list A, list B, C, and D. Now one, two, three, four. 
EFG are the individual elements of that list of list or you know of, of these different lists. So now you can perform operations on these individual values um, using an LMAP. Or, or even you know if you, if you have named list, you can rename or use functions like names as well. Um, and using uh, using like LMAP, it allows you to you, it allows the dot f to be a function which returns larger or smaller list than it receives. So you it gives you the flexibility of changing the size of the output. Um, and so let's let's look at a few examples. Um, so you know, using using the base pipe, if so this using same x uh, the list of lists that we've created before, and we run we apply the lmap function, um, we use lmap to apply the maybe repeat function, and then we look at the structure. Now it is giving me you know all the separate elements by picking up each of those um, lists inside the list. Now, um, what this function basically is going to do is it is going to always give you, you know, these different uh, results. So that's why we are setting seed here because, you know, we use the Poisson distribution, which would keep changing if you're not setting a seed. So now uh, the other thing I think uh, worth noticing here is like, okay, you know, you've seen what this is giving me now, but how is it different from what if, if I had used, what would you get if, if you use the map function here? So now since we're talking of, so so when we use map function, it does, uh, you know, the, the the map function, not without, not a, you know, um, not the map variant of in logical and all those, this will give, this will return you a list. But um, so what will happen is it is going to talk to you about each element of the list at the top list, right? So not the list of list elements. So this is where, that difference comes. So this is a list of 10 elements, which is each element of list of lists. So X of, you know, double uh, double square brackets I. And what we are looking at here is, you know, it, it gives you a list of four elements, meaning just the A, B, C, D. So X of I is what we are referring to here in this case. And then, you know, it gives you further details about it. So uh, that's really how you know, it, it gives you this, I think this is a good sort of explanation of how different your output would look like. And based off of that, you know, what your situation or your um, output you're expecting is when you'd want to use um, LMAP versus MAP. Um, is there any question so far? No, but what I was going to say, Priya, is this next bit, I... I got the code out of the function because I wanted to like see what was happening underneath, but I think I meant to hide this. Like, okay. I, <laughs> I don't think studying this is going to, would help us too much. Um, okay. But I wanted to, for my own self, I just wanted to see what was like going on. And I, mm -hmm. I don't think I did you a favor in the, in the layout of the RMD because the bit at the start, that maybe rep function should have been defined maybe later on or after the X, but I think you did a good job of like showing the LMAP versus the map and then showing the big thing is the difference in the output. Yeah. Like you said, it's like, it gives you a 10 length list and it's replicated some of those elements, whereas map gives you the four length list and inside the replication happens, but it's still, yeah, I'd guess for most people, I don't know what Arthur and Oliver Fame you think, but at this stage, it's probably still a bit unclear for people like, well, like, what's the real yeah, so I think one thing was stuff. sort of unclear to me here was, um, and, and maybe it is the distribution part, but why did it give the output that it gave? So why, why what is it? So we have an A, B, C, D. Why did we get A1, B1, B2, B3 here? Do you, do you know? Yeah, it's because of that maybe rep function. It's like, I might replicate, but I might not. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't in that first output replicate a but then it does replicate b twice okay. so it can choose to replicate i think let me get the full logic up um so i'll go to this function so uh so then n is is the Poisson distribution between one and two 
and based on that it will repeat so let's maybe look at why does this. it do all of them three times wait let me actually so i think it's um i had my console up as well to like when i was doing these yeah it's because the output of r power one two should be well it's i guess it's random isn't it um so yeah it's just that that value is being is being changed right for each element as the list in the list as it goes in you get like the next output um so if you do the get it out, which is so uh, so this x in uh when we are when we're calling this inside l map would be four uh so no x is the same thing but that n will be so yeah, X is the list or like the, the thing that's the going list of in, lists. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This one. And then you're you're mapping over all of the list elements inside the list of lists. Mm -hmm. And then for each one, it's got a different value, say of N. And then it's um also oh, and it says names of X. So this is where we get A, B, C, D, right? So this and this those names are okay. So this N. Sequence length is one, two, three, four. This is, um, hmm, I think, so based on what n value we get here, mm -hmm. we are saying repeat length x uh, that many times. So a is repeated once, or it's not repeated, but it. You know, you get a as one, so that n is one for the the first element, so the first list of that list x. So for a, we are getting one, and so the first portion of the names gets a one, one here and a here. Then the second mm -hmm. portion of this list is b, and that gets three. Um. So yeah, that's a little, uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm a little unsure as to why are those things like, why is this thing different for all those elements? You know what I'm saying? So that, yeah, so there's so this like, one end. So I don't know where that variation between the elements of the list is varying, but. But it's that, I, I guess, so you, you know, with the, but, with the list structure you've got, like in the X, so X mm -hmm. has four elements at the mm -hmm. moment and each yeah. one of them is um its own like list structure yep, well, yep. that list each thing inside that list which is at the moment a b c d they mm -hmm. each get passed in separately to maybe rep kind of like if you were doing map everything in your list gets passed into the function mm -hmm. so like you run the function once say on a and whatever mm -hmm. the value of the r like r plus one like one two whatever that first value is in, in your random seed, hmm. like A will get that number. Um, and then whatever the second, like you keep the same random seed, but you move to like the next um, position in the queue mm -hmm. and B will get that number. And then you've, you're calling it again. So you keep the okay. same random seed, but you move to the next position. And however so many, the number that is, is. Right, right. So although this is like one function, uh, okay, so I, I guess I think this X was probably slightly confusing then. So this X is actually, so when we are using LMAP to call this function, this X is actually, you know, getting first A, then B. So it is called four times because we have four named elements mm -hmm. or four named list within the list X. And then it gets A first, then it gets B. So that's why those are different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just because of that randomness, A gets one you know, just for fun. And so, for example, if I changed this seed. Yeah, uh, well, when we actually- You can see my script, right? Can you see my R studio? Uh, no, we're on the we're on the, the browser window. Oh, okay. It's rendered. Okay, well, yeah, when, when we actually call uh, the LMAP function, so let me just get it up in my thing. It sets the seed to one, two, three. So, um, mm. If you were to scroll down, and um, you'll get 
kind of print it in the um thing but like these are the outputs that you get um so, but yeah the seed i mean this we don't have these um So in you see in here we've set a new seed as like one two three mm -hmm. um, um so i i'm not able to I'm, I'm getting some other error but do you wanna maybe share your screen for a quick minute and try a different seed and i imagine we will get these different numbers here yeah i i could uh i could very quickly do mine um so I've, I've I've got the calculations up here, um, so like uh, I've got a bunch of different windows open. Just make sure we get the right one. Um, say when you set the seed to one, two, three, mm -hmm. which is what we did um, here. So we set the seed to one, two, three on line eighty. If you set the seed there, and then you call Arpa, like I, I don't like saying Arpa. It, it sounds weird, but Arpa's and that sounds even weirder but you say the first time you call it you get one mm -hmm. so what you'd expect is uh -oh. that a um, right. has the output of one right mm -hmm. up here mm -hmm. a just has once and then the next time you call it well you get three yeah um, so this will be the b value this is the yeah. number of times b1 b2 b3 and we get b1 b2 b3 so then like the next time yeah again we come through you get half by one two gives that two so we should get D12 and then oh no sorry C12 and then with D we get four so we get four versions of D um yeah that's the so if you change that C that number basically would change yeah it should so if we change unless we happen to get like the same C which seems very unlikely um oh I haven't done any of these so let me get these get these and where's that seed gone okay so do this uh now we just got a1 c1 c2 d1 just the b0 yeah it must be doing some of them zero so if we do but i thought this would be good okay why i have i x is this right um So A, so B just disappears, but how does B yeah. disappear? Shouldn't be able to disappear. So B must be zero then. Like um, if you check R boys one, two again. Yeah, well, so this one would be, but I didn't know that. Good, oops. Um, no, Jack, one quick good. thing. If you just do up, up arrow, you don't need to write it again. Yeah, yeah, that's true, like this. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so we get one, zero, one, zero three, three, one. Three, one. Yeah. yeah, which is, is the output. Okay. That, yeah, which, that's exactly what is happening. I wonder if anyone has any, I mean, given the introduction, I, I think the answer is no, but I, I wonder if anyone has any kind of more real life, less contrived yeah, examples. I, was, I, uh, I wish, yeah, I think yeah. otherwise. <laughs> I know I do though. Um, and I, I, it comes down later in the markdown. Um, I guess it's, for when working with data frames, there's stuff you can do of say like LMAP and the LMAP if, and LMAP if that mm. stop you having to do like uh, data mutate across this stuff. Like you can just do LMAP um, with the predicate functions. And it's like, in my head, it looks a lot easier than using mutate and across and a function. Um, but I guess we'll see that a little bit a little bit later on yeah so yeah i think now we, we've sort of discussed this i can move on to that section so yeah so you know after after this discussion i think we are um meant to move to these variants so um so as uh, as jack you know rightly pointed so we, we've just covered how we can use LMAP. Now there are variants available for it. Uh, uh, you know, LMAP if using a condition 
if you want to, you know, similar to an if else, if you want to apply a function only if a certain condition is true, I think this, uh, so uh, I, I know that uh, we used to have this for mutate and other dplyr functions as well, but they're all superseded. So uh, we it practically don't use them anymore. So it's, it's good to see that, you know, we have them here and they directly use this function instead of having to put it through another mutate and uh, getting to the output. So yeah, in this case, basically what this example is saying is, you know, X referring back to the same list of lists. If you, if any of those elements, each of those elements, if it's a character, that's when you want to uh, run that maybe rep. Uh, and then you're, you're looking at the structure. So what is happening here in this case is, so first, for example, the element uh, and the first and the last one, or sorry, first and the third element, A and C, we know that these are numbers, so it's not gonna do anything about it. But for uh, uh, if if it's a character uh, element, you know it's gonna give you that one, two, three based on the R pos value that you will get for it. So in, in this particular you know seed situation, we have um, four repetitions of B, but none for D. Uh, but you notice at, at for A and C there is no function call being made for, for these elements because they're not character. Um, and for for the underscore act function, uh, we would refer to the position of the element to, to perform an operation. And in, in this case, for example, we're saying we want to apply this element, this function on a list input series, right, for, these named lists only, right? And if it, um, uh, I guess what I was gonna say is, you know, if, if this were to translate to map, it would be the column names, but let's let's uh, stick with this example. So now um, sort of a reverse of this is uh, it's only functioning on, you know, these two named lists inside X. And the other two are uh, other two are unaffected. Um, I guess if this makes sense. Um, any any questions? So I guess for the, I think the documentation says this, but just to confirm my understanding for the dot p, uh, the predicate function. It's just any function that returns a logical. So it's kind yes. of like being evaluated on each each element of the like encapsulating list. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so I think we didn't cover this. Uh, so, so yeah, you know, like you said, so dot p is, is called the predicate function that would only return true false. And dot else is an option which uh, is what you want the fun, you know, this function to do when it's false. So in this case, I've only mentioned, like, you know, this is what it is true. So it is not going to do anything if it's false, but you have that option to add dot else as well. So is that the, am I saying that right, Jack? Yeah, yeah. I didn't want like I didn't find many use cases because actually I'm thinking that it's not LMAP that has the super useful stuff. It's the modify stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But if you there was something that I did think was interesting. It's come up quite a few times in uh, various like per sessions that we've had or even I think maybe dplyr but in the docs for lmap they say let me get it up but it's something along the lines of like we now prefer people to use the anonymous formula notation mm -hmm. rather than like passing in the dot dot dots as like additional so arguments this, yeah this, yeah this and it's it's funny because quite I think a few times we've mentioned or discussed this and we've all kind of agreed that this is the better way to like write your own code um and yeah it's just they, they've actually said that themselves which is like which is nice i guess yeah um so uh and and to sort of come back to this um i guess if if else part of it uh, I was thinking, so I think in, in a way, so if I had, you know, a, a rather more relevant real life example, it would have been easier, but um, we could use, I mean, you know, like the typical if else, right? So if I don't want, 
So if it's a, so for example, in, in let's let's focus on this example. So if you wanted to, um, I'm trying to think. So a lot of times you have, you know, those situations where you are saying, okay, if it's a character, or let's say if it's an integer number that you have in your table, or well, it's we are we're talking L map, but you know, I'm I'm thinking of a scenario where I work a lot on tables, so I have table columns. Uh, I have columns in the table. And let's say, you know, these are all, you know, uh, for uh, hypothetically thinking, these are all dollar values. I know that. So we, I could, you know, have a function where I'm saying, oh, I want you to, you know, format those functions in a certain way. So if it's all, or if it's all is dot integer, you know, run this function, if it's all character, you know, else, I want you to, you know, format it as date or, you know, format it as certain character thing, special thing that I want you to do. So I think that's how I would probably think of it as this, this if function to be doing, where it lets me conditionally apply, you know, different function based on what type in, in this case, you know, for example, whatever the type of the column is, or similarly, you know, something else. Uh, but within that one line of code, I can define, do I want you to run this function or do I want you to write a separate function? And I think this would um, replace uh, that one if else block uh, from your code, but within and in, in replace it like maybe three, four lines with that one line is my thinking. Yeah, yeah. And you can, you can like null everything and do certain things it's hard to think of a use case that without the right type of data yeah that's what i found and i didn't have time to make the right type of data so i was just like okay we'll just we'll get right. to it. yeah and then plus lists are not uh you know not not easy to play with and then this this one wants a listed list after all so yeah e even though i guess it's on the surface of things kind of nice that there's this else statement i mean it almost seems like you would just want your function, your function and dot f to have to handle that, right? So, mm. where you know, in, in 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 the body of the function, you say, you know, if it's this class, mm -hmm. do this. Else, if it's this class, do this. Yeah. And I I, I don't know. That's just kind of a passive yeah, thought. I, 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 I was looking for not... mutate mutate if and things like that to see if there's a parallel, like if they're just mm. kind of carrying over that same logic from the I guess deprecated or superseded uh, things from dplyr the mutate f and mutate at yeah yeah i don't think the i don't know so i do probably the i mean those functions have been superseded by something else so i guess in other words they are pre deprecated or even if not but then yeah it is suggested to use the latest versions of it so i think that's where uh, across and others came in where they said okay now you can use this not use those older versions of the functions uh, but yeah, I think uh, that's, that's I guess, the usual tendency, unless, I mean, we could, but I mean, yes, yeah, so coming back to that point, right, so when we handle those things within a function, so it could be, I, I would say probably just the style of coding, because then I have read about, and I think I also generally follow that kind of style but i do remember having read somewhere that you know if you're doing if your function is doing lots of things then ideally you should have you know you, you should break it down to do just one thing right so even if it's like you know uh, if this is if it's this class and you want to so for example like i think simply if it's a character if it is going to return a character vector you would run a map underscore chr if it is returning a integer character you wanted to you want to use map underscore int, right? So we would probably be doing if else within that and say, okay, then run this one, then otherwise else run this. But in this case, we could probably just define two different functions and then pass it into um, map l map if. I think that's how that's how it would work. Probably making it more efficient because now we you know, those two things are actually smaller functions doing smaller set of things. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But then in, in a certain sense, if you continue that logic to its extreme, like what if we had three things or n, th you know, like n different things, then we'd have to have like 
L uh, map case case yeah. wet, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you'd want separate L maps, I guess, right? Like call it on call L map on everything. And if it's then, this, then I think then otherwise... they need L map at I think. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, the LMAP adds in just because you do it. Like, right, then like you could anymore. use um, three versions or a, a number of versions of LMAP ads. So for color, for the named list A and D, do this. For others, do that. For individual ones, do something else. Yeah. Or just chain together a bunch of uh, LMAP, LMAP ifs, right? So yeah, that, that's yeah, kind yeah. of like the, the case, case when. Mm. Uh, Without mm -hmm. an else. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, only an else on the last one. Then you've you've mm. kind of remade some weird case when <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but I I thought what it, what I what I struggled with was I sat there and I tried to think of functions that only take lists as inputs because that's one of the things it says is like this function will allow you to use um, functions that only take lists as inputs. I couldn't really I mean like couldn't really think of any anything useful like maybe unlist would but then i had nothing else i don't know if you guys know functions in the world that this was like made for um i i could not think of any but then the other thing was like it, if you're dealing with stuff where you don't know the number of outputs like if there's randomness involved then it's just better than trying to use map which will not allow you to do that um but yeah, I again, I I was sat there thinking, well, when's that really going to help me? And I couldn't at the time think of any time. Um, I don't know if you guys could think of anything. The only thing I could think of maybe is if um, although packages thankfully exist for for this is like uh, let's say you're traversing the like if you think of a JSON uh, file as kind of like a tree, you know, mm -hmm. um, you have like the top level objects that contain objects that in turn contain objects then. Maybe you could do something like that, where the list size would be like you'd have I don't know unpredictable list size, I guess, or like number of lists that you're going to get as you walk down like the the tree. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, so you, then you have to use safely or something. Um, hmm. if you like, if you were going to pull out nulls or like stuff was not going to come out. It's one of, yeah, it's one of, it would definitely be helpful to have the right data structure, like a good JSON list or something to to try it on. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, so should we move on to modify? Sounds good. Yeah, well, I, quick, just while we're here, I, on this one, I was thinking of an extra chapter for this book, and it's like a bring your own code as like a revision session. Yeah. And I think something like LMAP would be really cool for that. If like at the end, we all bring, we all get like 10 minutes or whatever to go through stuff we either wanted to remember, did remember, or realize we have a cool use case for. Um, would you guys be interested in, in doing something like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, potentially yes. I, it'll just maybe take some doing, at least on my own side, to come up with with yeah, yeah, but, like yeah, realistic yeah, use cases scenarios for these. Yeah, from your work. yeah. It is. It, it's. It, it'll be very useful, but uh, will we be able to find all those cases? Is something to be seen. <laughs> all right. So okay, I guess I'll move on from here. So, so the next function is modify. And uh, so I'm gonna read this from, from here. Uh, so the key difference between modify function and the map family is that map and its variants, they always return the same data type. Modify, however, returns the same, um, same data type as the input. Jack. Modify takes a vector list or data frame object as an input and it returns the same data type. And that is not necessarily always the case with map. So um, so I guess what, what this is saying is um, in case of map and its variants, we, we think about what we want to return and then we choose the variant accordingly, although map would always return a list. 
um, but modify whatever is your input, the, the data type for the output is going to be the same. I think that's what this is. So for example, let's look at this example. Uh, so let's see this. Um, so if I'm passing a integer vector C1 to five, and I want to add one to it. So it is directly going to give me one number added to that. If I add two, it is going to do the same thing. And how are these different? So if it's a list, it is going to return me a list. Um, okay, so uh, do we have, uh, so I'm gonna try. If I, I author says, if looks like you did, if doesn't have a else or dot else, likewise summarize if, so dot else seems not to be mirroring, okay. Um, so Arthur just shared uh, that the um, the underscore if and the underscore at variants of, or just the if variant of the other dplyr functions that we were talking, they do not have um, the dot else variation, which is different from lmap if. Um, okay, so for, for this modify, I'm gonna try this. In in my um, our studio and uh, my bad that I'm not sharing that yet. So just give me a moment. Um, let's see, I would stop sharing and share again. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm not share, able to share everything. I have to do it one at a time. So I, I just ran these different examples to look at the difference of what uh, how, how modify is different from map. So what we are saying is, uh, so for a map function, it will, so map function always returns a list, right? So if you're passing a list as an input to it, it will give you a, it will return um, a list back. So this is the first element of in, on all the elements in it. But if you're returning a vector, it will return each element as a list of its own. So here we got the input was one list, the output is one list. Here the input was one vector of five elements, and then you have five different lists being returned. Um, and then, so if I, but if, if it's a modify function, if I am passing a vector to it, it is returning a vector to me. And if I'm uh, giving an input of list, then it is returning one list to me. I just want to try one more variant of the, you know, the map variant of these functions and see if that is any different. So if I give map int an input vector, it returns a vector. And if I give it a list, I think it would still return a vector. Um, okay, so when it is an int, you can only give input as a vector. All right, so I'm going to go back to the other file. All right, so uh, I guess uh, to summarize, we can use the modify function to um, make any changes to the inputs, um, right? So when we when we want to modify a data frame as input, when we feed modify a data frame as input, it returns a data frame as the output. So for example, if I want to run as dot character, um, one second, so on the iris column, on the iris data frame, I want, if I run or modify as dot character and say table, it's going to do this. Um, so, Jack, I think this is important. You want to talk about this example? I think this is an interesting one. Yeah. So, it, well, what it is, it takes this uh, data frame, Iris as the input. And normally in Iris, like 
sepal length width petal length width they're both they're, they're all like uh doubles or numerics and species is a factor uh -huh. uh, but if you feed in the data frame say like just like this to modify and your function is as character well every every character every element every of that column becomes a hybrid. character yeah it gets gets changed to a character and then mm. the next one down is like the interesting one is like when you might not before say pe people people are often asking like off oh, data science slack so i want to do i got loads of columns in my data frame and i want to change all of the characters to like a factor or whatever or like the other way around and normally it's some combination it used to be like mutate if um, but now it's kind of like mutate across where is dot character mm -hmm. like formula notation or whatever like there's a lot going on you can mess up the brackets and stuff but with modify if you just go well like if it's a factor change it to a character and it's mm -hmm. quite seems to me like a lot nicer for this use case than Much using cleaner. than yeah. using yeah than using mutate across um yeah, I, I wasn't sold here. I, I was not sold here on this example, but I think this one, it does. It, it, you don't have to use across and where and, you know, all those things. And pretty clean that, you know, you can see you're checking for factor columns and then you're replacing them with, you know, making it a ca character now. So I guess so one thing um, sort of I think would have been helpful was if, uh, although I think we all know, but I, I want... The, Directly, I couldn't uh, see what this function was doing. Like, if I had, if I could see Iris here as the, you know, the raw data, and then see what this mm -hmm. modifier is doing. So basically, you know, like you said, these, these first four columns are these are all numeric, and then this one is a factor. So when I'm saying modify, this has changed all the columns to as you know character type. This is exactly what this is doing, and um, so if you're doing a modification um, conditionally in this this is the way to do it and you're saying so if you have a factor column or column of factor data type then you make it to a character so in this case it is only this that's getting modified so that's yeah the so the point of doing the first function. one was just to show like you put a data frame in you get a data frame out yeah uh, that, and then this one is like where it might actually be quite useful or like have some useful properties but yeah, I should have printed the iris data set. Yeah. So what's interesting yeah. about the iris data set, actually, I, I, now I don't know for behind the scenes how the if you made any modifications, but actually, you know, like it seems to me like modify is sort of like uh, the principle of, um, you know, like you put in a certain type and you get that same type out. But actually, there's a class that's being added to the data to, to iris because iris is a data frame, and then we're getting a tibble out. Which is also a data frame, but it still it has additionally the class of tibble. Ah, uh, but that that's me. You see, I put on the tibble just so that the um. Oh, whoops! Whoops! whoops. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Never mind. Just, in that, just in that so case, that I feel be... better just for pretty printing. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, if you go down, so you see, like next one on two point one, I put like this one. Oh, sorry, it, it's down a little bit versus, uh, like this map one? it. And I didn't turn it to a tibble. Tibble, yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, it returns like this list anyway, but it's like, I didn't want it to print the whole data frame. That was- Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Okay, I sorry. I, I I was focused. I wasn't <laughs> seeing that last uh, that last important line. Um, actually, one comment on the modify if actually is a, just something that bubbled to mind is uh, it's kind of interesting that that, mod, that mutate at got got deprecated because modify if is basically the exact same thing only i guess it's usefully more general right it works not only on data frames but on everything else yeah it's funny i wonder if it's like a candidate for deprecation in the future <laughs> i hope not it's too it's too useful <laughs> yeah it's like but i wonder if they think like ah, oh, nobody's really using this so like we don't need to apply the same thing as we did with mutate at and if and stuff but then it's a different package as well, right? It's Per versus DeepFlyer. And I think a lot of the confusion in DeepFlyer was like you couldn't do the same things with filter as you could with mutate. I don't know their other motivations, but it was like it was a bit weird how it was all working. Um, whereas, yeah, like you say, hopefully they keep this this LMAP thing because it's I can see that there's loads of ways you could use this um, when you get used to it, I think. Oh, sorry, modify if not LMAP.
Yeah, second so value as we're talking, I was trying to check for the data frame question. And yeah, it's it's perfectly still a data frame after. So if I if I don't if I remove those pipe table table. Okay, so yeah, so this is uh, again, you know, sort of that comparison of how a map if would look like um, if you were to do the same thing in inside a map instead of modify if. Um, so I'm thinking, so are this the same thing then? Because if, if I added the table here, do they look the same? No, sorry. So now this is like um, map is map if has returned a list, right? Uh, and the elements okay. of the list, like sepal mm. sepal length is one element of the list, mm. and then the next one is sepal width. Like it's okay. it wouldn't be a data frame anymore because map because map always returns a list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I wonder. Uh, I'll yeah. Maybe experiment with this later, but I wonder what would happen if you had in modify if if you somehow like if your function um, changes the <laughs> class of the thing that you, you mm -hmm. your input right I would it would, would, would it give would... a an na I guess. Yeah, it would be something complicated and you know sort of not not unexpected behavior at the first time I'm sure, but I think it's it's a very good thing to know that modify would keep your input uh, and output data type same because if with that I think and, and I think you sort of mentioned it but just to call it out loud that you know you could very easily use modify if inside within your you know flow of chains like the the tidyverse dplyr chains that we write in our codes. Uh, you could like very easily replace your mutate statements with a modify if in a more neater way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure because it what it does inside in the actual code of modify is it has these things like restore. So it like it's basically checking the input type and then it's mapping over it and then it's restoring it back to the data type that it had it in after it's called the function. Um, so like in your console, if you just like type modify with no brackets or anything, right, you get like the source code and mm. it checks like, is this a list? Okay. If it is the out is do something like this. And then it goes, okay, we'll restore out back to what dot X was like the same data type. And then mm. if it's a data frame, it says, okay, if it's not a list, we'll check if it's a data frame. If it is do some stuff with it. Um, but then restore that vector at the end after you've called the function back to the same data type as dot x was like the input. Mm -hmm. And it's like if it's not a data frame, well then, uh, is it a vector? And if it is, uh, I don't know, just don't worry, just go through that and return turn the output. So I think it would. You try to like change the um, output type in your function, and I think it would change it back. That's just my guess. Um, yeah, so I think so you're all trying to answer Arthur's question, right? So yeah. if you if your function modified something, so whatever is going inside the modify still, like whatever it is at the stage where it is entering modify, you know, it is going to stay the same. Yeah, it's like it's going to get changed. I think. I mean, I could be wrong. This is just a prediction, just by looking at the code, but. I think it stores the value of dot x for the input and your function can do kind of loads of stuff or whatever, but the thing that gets outputted by modify gets restored to the same data type as dot x at the end. Mm -hmm. um, we could make that something we definitely could do. We could make a function like, okay, at the end, this function coerces like this data frame into a list, right? It just like unlists the data frame and run that through modify and see what comes out like a data frame or a list i would guess just by looking at it that it will be a data frame but it would be interesting because it's, it's probably not the kind of use case that you imagine when you're making a function right it's like someone's gonna do something like that inside a function and put it through modify yeah it's, it's funny yeah. all right so Okay, so let's now look at um, the next variant modify at. 
um i think very much in sync with the underscore at um you know concept where we are now looking to do something with the vector of indices or using the names so we are look now going to do the modification um by position or by uh, so the position basically would be identified by either the vector of indices that you're passing or by the names of the uh, column in a vector format. So here we are passing one, two, three, four as dot integer. We are saying position columns at position one to four is what you want to turn into an integer. And so the uh, the double, you know, all of these, all four of these columns were double earlier, and that's why they were they had decimal places. Now they've been converted or reduced into an integer, and hence no more decimal places over here. So that's a cool one as well. Um, so let's look at modify tree. I think this was an interesting one that we earlier discussed, Jack. So again, X is our list of lists. Um, if you look at the structure, we have, um, so this is a list of one, which in, in turn has a list of three elements and a list of one and a list of two and so on. Now we could transform each of these leaves and add, let's say hundred in this case. So we have elements here list, the, the element A has two and one. C has B1 is equal to two. So this is like one list list with one element. Then C, uh, sorry, A, C, and B, and B has two named elements again. Um, C1 and C2. Um, and then now here, if I use, so uh, I guess this is an example which it is showcasing that if you wanted to do um, a certain operation on all the elements of the tree, right? You could, of, of your list of lists or all the elements within your list of lists, you could use modify tree function. Um, and in this sound of um, something, it reminds me of something that I was talking about yesterday in my team was, I was trying to do something and in my head, I could relate that to, you know, something like an RM, RF, RM hash RF, when we're looking at, you know, for example, when you want to read a file uh, in a folder in, in the sub, uh, subsequent subfolders also. Um, so you would, you, or, you know, if you're trying to remove those, all, all the files in from a folder, you would say RM minus RF, where you're saying recursively find the folders and subfolders and remove everything. Or, you know, same, same way you could read things as well. So in, in, in the same vein, I am thinking that you know all the elements in your list, so you know the sublists, right? So or, and the elements within the sublist. So this is going to operate on that. Um, and so yeah, you know. So I had uh, so we had two, one, two, three, and four, and everything is gonna get hundred more. So you'll get hundred and two, hundred and one, a hundred and two here, and then hundred and three and hundred and four for you know adding hundred to all of these sub elements or so-called tree in your tree of list. Um, so it yeah, and it's, it's funny because leaf is f, leaf is dot f. You know, like you see how it says leaf equals this function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's a mm. real departure from everything else, kind of in. Uh, yes, good point. Um, which good I point. didn't really get. I think this because this, this must be really new, right? Because in the docs it says like ellipsis is reserved for future use must be left empty um <laughs> so it's obviously come in like quite late it's i think it's the kind of one like it would be really helpful if you're doing some coding problems maybe like you often get recursion problems or like, like recursively edit a list and do stuff to it but it's that this is probably one where like you have to spend a, quite a bit of time using it to really see where it's like that useful i think yeah and no, i think this this is a pretty neat example where it, you're saying that you know, if you want to do so like one small thing to all the elements out there you know you could use this tree mm -hmm. because otherwise what we would do potentially is unlist or unnest and then do this operation 
but then again, I, it, it with with. Um, so I, I and again I don't know. So with respect to you know list of lists, if even that one unnest would function uh, appropriately or not. So uh, and then you would have to, and and then you want to bring it back to that list of lists, right? So original form, for example, if if that's the case. So then you to you you've done the unnesting and now you would nest it again. So mm -hmm. in that yeah, that or you or you'd have to helps. like map inside a map or like map in right so basically this is saying that you know you just focus on doing what you need to do don't worry about the structure i'll you know things will just be as it is yeah there's there's another function and i again this is what i meant to kind of add in late and didn't but there's modify underscore depth and it's not in the rmd i think that i sent but that's like with modify depth you specify which uh level of the list to do the thing to so you mm -hmm. modify tree if you have it as like we were just using it then without using all of the arguments like modify tree will do it to all of them recursively whereas modify depth lets you go into nested lists and do stuff at like depth three like as in the third nesting so just uh, focus on the third depth okay yeah which is pretty cool i think it maybe does warrant a bit more or modify and modify tree i noticed we're at like so we're also at seven o'clock um yeah mm -hmm. do people want to like stick a flag and we'll come back next week or what do you want to do um there's quite a bit left and there's yeah so predicate the, functional is left uh, and uh, yeah uh, and i didn't we actually haven't just started we haven't touched this though this is yeah. definitely something you should not start now you no, can, and I mean, didn't I, I'm fine with the uh, sticking a few more minutes when we like for us so that we can finish um, any you know um, like subsequent thoughts we have on the recursion or on modify. But I think uh, it would be um, appropriate to to touch this one and and the eventual subsequent ones later in the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because I didn't finish those as in the, I didn't finish the preparation for predicate functionals a few weeks ago before we had it. So, yeah, definitely we shouldn't start that because the person who takes it next week can do the whole of predicate functionals yeah. together. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to keep going for like a few minutes if we want to discuss the like these bits, um, but we won't do predicate. Cool. Should we hold the uh, map depth and uh, modify depth for next week as well? Yeah, I think I think um, I don't know if anyone wants to take it. Um, if someone does want to take it, it would be cool to do modify depth and mo like uh, modify depth and modify tree like a bit more in depth because I just didn't really um I didn't really cover them properly. Okay, so you can then uh, I think maybe put that on the channel and you know we can. Uh, I guess we need to look for that link. I'm not sure. I'm I'm able to find modify depth here. Right yeah, next. I'm going to end for YouTube so they don't have to hear our whole, like discussion of the future. But thanks, guys, for listening. If anyone has got this far on YouTube, and see you next week.